exact figure, but some surveys put the number of ghost estates in Ireland at over 600. Uh, another big development town. Everything for sale, but not a house to live in. And every county has its share. Chris Sparks teaches politics and sociology at IT Sligo. Along with some colleagues and students, he's on a field trip to experience the aftermath of the Irish property crash firsthand. like there was an army of people here and all of a sudden somebody came and that's literally I guess what happened and, and said up oh, and go and like some kind of army on the run they fled the place what was it like that day when they came in and they thought they were fitting in the you know some plumbing or they thought they were fitting in skirting boards and somebody came in and said that's it stop and you can actually see the room frozen in aspect the day that the builders were told that this project was finished. You drive past them, see them as you go to the shops or maybe as you drive kind of in the distance but never ever close up like this. In some ways when you look at the houses you're also seeing another kind of ghostliness really and that is, you know, there isn't a child looking out in the children's bedroom and there, there are adults downstairs watching TV. You know, they're not out there now looking at their daffodils or digging the soil. So the place is full of the presence of people who were intended to come here, and, and they just never arrive. This really is quite a spooky place on quite a nice afternoon. It'd be very spooky at night, and the reason it's spooky is, is because of all the lost lives the missing lives and the, and the withdrawn hopes that these buildings represent. Fueled by tax breaks, housing estates rose in a landscape where there was little demand locally. The idea was, build and people will come. At Schlee Court Lass in North Longford, just two out of 18 houses are currently lived in. The developer intends to complete the estate if more of the vacant houses can be sold. Why would you like to live here? Uh, no facilities around. If I would like to live in a state, I would like to have all the facilities. If I would like to live in the countryside, I would like to live in a one off house. You know, it's a blight on the community as they stand. I'd knock them. Plain and simple. One idea might be to turn to a retirement village, but again, that's going to re require resource and expenditure and the current financial climate. You just wonder where it's going to come from. There's some sort of private enterprise would take on that role. To just knock them, basically. I wouldn't want my money as a taxpayer going back into these houses. I really wouldn't. It's real housing. Absolutely bad. That kind of fast buck mentality that everybody thought they were an entrepreneur, anyone with a field could sell it and make a quick million. That kind of almost addiction to quick wealth, people will see that as a kind of state of madness. And these are the relics, the historical relics, as long as they stand, that will show every time you drive up this road, people, you can look at this and go, this is not something that we should fall for again. Good evening. The Minister for Finance, Brian Callan, has dismissed suggestions that the economy is too dependent on the construction sector, responding to new figures showing that the sector now has...